Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me today for our second episode in our new series, Spirituality Explained. Today we're going to continue talking about this concept of the creation of the universe. Where did all of this come from? Where did we come from? What is God? What are we? These are the basic questions that we ask about life. And really I will say that these things are far beyond our ability to put into concepts, let alone words and try to intellectually understand. But I still find it really fun and interesting to try to break this down into a way that our minds can grasp or maybe more accurately into a way that we can experience. Before I start, I just want to say um, thank you so much for your support. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this content. Leave me a comment. Check the description box for links to my social media. I'm now on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. I also have my free class and my Patreon page linked in the description. Last week we talked about the creation of the universe from the perspective of Law of One. Law of One breaks down the creation into what it calls three distortions, or we could say expressions, of the one infinite creator. I described them in my video as steps of creation. However, since creation exists outside of time, just keep in mind that there is no sequence of events. All of these expressions of the creator exist simultaneously and eternally. Just as a brief reminder, step one is infinity awakening into consciousness. Step two is consciousness expressing itself metaphysically as love. And step three is love condensing into light and forming the building blocks of this physical world. We saw this idea of infinity, consciousness, love repeated across religious traditions, including the Hindu Satchit Ananda or being consciousness bliss, the Hebrew I am that I am, and the Christian Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the Father is infinity, the Son is consciousness. This really comes out strongly in A Course in Miracles. Keeping this in mind, let's look at a couple of other sources which give us insights into the creation. First, I'd like to look at A Course in Miracles, which is another channel text, which I've done several videos on already, and I'll link those in the description. A Course in Miracles says on the topic of creation, creation is the sum of all God's thoughts, in number infinite, and everywhere without all limit. Only love creates, and only like itself. There was no time when all that it created was not there, nor will there be a time when anything that it created suffers any loss. Forever and ever are God's thoughts, exactly as they were and as they are, unchanged through time and after time is done. So again, we see this idea of infinity, consciousness, love. God's thoughts are infinite in number represents infinity. Creation is the sum of all God's thoughts represents consciousness. In other words, the entire creation is the mind of God expressed. More on this in a moment. And finally, only love creates represents love. And we also see in this text that God's thoughts are unchanged throughout time, indicating that what we perceive of as the creation of the universe is an eternal state of being, more than it is a sequence of events. Creation is something that is eternally happening. Or perhaps more accurately, we could say that creation is what is being itself and experiencing itself. I just want to take a moment to highlight some similarities between these two texts, The Law of One and A Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles says creation is the sum of all God's thoughts. Law of One says the whole universe is part of one original thought. A Course in Miracles says only love creates and only like itself. Law of One says love is the creative principle. All that exists is the infinite mind of God expressed into all that we know and experience. This expression is the creation. This expression is love because the nature of God is love. And so to experience God is to experience love. 
And according to both A Course in Miracles and Law of One, God is only thinking one thought. What is this thought? More on this in a moment. First, I'd like to look at another text and one that we, most of us, are probably far more familiar with, and that's the Bible. But rather than going to Genesis chapter 1 today, I'd like to go to John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, or the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. The Greek word here, Logos, was understood in early Greek thought to be the divine order of all things, or perhaps better put, the divine mind, the divine logic or the divine mind. So according to this passage, the creation of the universe is the divine mind expressed, or as Aaron Tomlinson puts it, in the beginning was consciousness. So if we replace this word logos and all the pronouns referring to it with the word consciousness, here's what we get, verse two. Consciousness was with God, or infinity in the beginning, through consciousness all things were made. There's love, the creative principle. Without consciousness, nothing was made that's been made. In consciousness was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. There's the light, or the creation of the physical world. Infinity, consciousness, love, light. Different terminology, same progression. I've always loved the way that Richard Rohr, a modern-day Christian mystic, understands the creation. In his book, The Universal Christ, he talks about how there have been two incarnations of the Christ. The first was what he calls the Cosmic Christ, which was expressed as the entire creation of the universe. Therefore, all of creation, everything that exists, is what we might call Christ Consciousness. The second incarnation of the Christ was Jesus of Nazareth. When one person so embodied the divine nature so as to perfectly represent God to us. And while I certainly don't want to downplay the second incarnation of Jesus Christ, the man who came to show us what God is like, I do think that in religious circles there is a huge tendency to downplay or even dismiss the first incarnation, which leads to a lot of misunderstandings about the nature of reality and about who and what we are. When we understand that the entire creation is the unfoldment of the consciousness of God or of the Christ, and that Jesus Christ was the full embodiment of what that can look like for each one of us. Everything changes about the way we view ourselves, the way we view and interact with others. As A Course in Miracles states, God only has one Son. The Son of God is the original thought of God, the consciousness of God, the Christ. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament echoes this same message when he says, Christ is all and is in all. So what is this Christ? What is God's original thought? Well, I'm sure it is far beyond our ability to quantify or express in language. As I said in the beginning, I do believe that it's something that we can experience because after all, it's the core of who we are as each one of us is part of this original thought. God only has one son, means that there's only one consciousness in the universe. Every conscious being in existence sees themselves as the center point of consciousness, sees themselves as the I around which the rest of the world is revolving. Every person refers to themselves as me. We are all that same me. We are all having that same experience as the center point of consciousness. We just don't realize it because we feel separated from each other, our consciousness feels cut off from each other in this body. And this is why I believe the original thought of God or the one consciousness in the universe, the creation itself, can be summed up with this phrase, I am. The creation is God eternally being and experiencing God's being. As recorded in Exodus, I am that I am or I am eternally being and experiencing what I am. We, as part of the I, are experiencing our own being and experiencing each other's being and coming to the realization that I am and so are you and this is what we call love. Be loved, be happy, be at peace, and thank you for watching.